run through of what I was expecting you to find with the student participation exercises. Ideally you've done this yourself and found it all and worked on your own initiative but just in case you don't get there I'm giving these uh, work throughs here. So the first thing we do is we look at the uh, go to assembly on NCBI. Uh, if I click on that it'll take me to uh, Safari. I don't want that on my Mac actually because of certain quirks. I'm going to take it instead uh, here to Chrome. So I, I type that in here. Oops, uh, like that in there and takes me to assembly. Um, and once that's loaded, I then go in here and we say we want to type that in. We type that in and we see what we find. We click on there. It uh, presents us with a genome sequence or two, in fact. We'll just click the first one here by clicking on it. We click on download. We'll just accept the default of taking all that stuff, please, and download it. It downloads and it's done. We go to our downloads folder over here. We can see it's sitting there. If we click on it, it should expand. Usually that will work on a Mac or Windows machine, I think. Uh, it's a zip file that requires a program to unzip it, but that's in, in, installed as default. And then if you go through, there are these different folders, two very slightly different versions of the same thing there. And it's these that we're going to use, one of these. So what we now do is we go back, if we go back to the PowerPoint slide, we go onto this site here. This doesn't matter, we can do that. Um, also here, so if we go here and type that in there, uh, it gives us ResFinder. Um, if we go through ResFinder, what we want to do is we want to select the species, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, and then we want to choose a file. So if we go up here and we go to downloads, and we go to the most recent set, and we go in here and in here and in here, and we just take that and we go open. And then we submit the job and then we wait okay so the job is running I'm going to fast forward this for you though And now we've got a result here and we can look and see basically the basic report is it's told us this is amicacin resistant which is more or less what we expect but rifampicin, methambutol, niacinizin resistance these are all very important because these are frontline agents for treating TB and the fact we've got those multiple uh, drugs resistances there. Amicacin is a second line agent and so that is important as well but that is a uh, bad uh, finding there. It's telling us about acquired hits so in fact these are actually natural it says here in, um, in, in in tuberculosis you'd expect that anyway and then if we go down here we've got these chromosomal mutations so it's telling us about the genes that it finds first of all and telling us it, okay I found all the very relevant genes that are um, relevant to, to antimicrobial resistance and then it's giving us a lot of extra um, information here about what the mutations in those genes mean so here in this mb gene it's telling us we've got that change there and this is a 
uh, mutation associated with Ifambutol resistance. If we go down, most of these are just genes that it's finding, but then here it's found the gyre A and it said, ah, oh, there's a mutation in there, which is relevant to fluoroquinolone resistance. Um, and then if we go further down, uh, it will tell us, ah, oh, RPOB, which is a key resistance gene for rifampicin resistance, it's found two mutations in there which are associated with the rifampicin resistance. And so you can see that very quickly and easily we can get a lot of information from um, an analysing a genome and actually come up with a, um, uh, a change in the genome associated with a particular resistance and call out resistances. So uh, more troublesome as well, we've got pyrazinamide resistance as well here, all of these different mutations associated with pyrazinamide. So this is why we're calling it XCR because it's basically got resistances in resistance mutations in uh, most of the uh, drugs that we would be using to treat tuberculosis. So that's the end of that first exercise looking at uh, what we find with TB. Now let's go to the second exercise. We go back here to the assembly uh, and this time we want to go and get acid vector pulsar type 27 and we type that in there, we search for it, we download the assembly again, downloads quickly, we go here, there's a data set, we click on it, unzips it, then um, we go back here and we can take ourselves back to this site here um, and just restart that. This time we're not going to give it a species because Acinetobacter is not listed there, but we'll, we'll choose a file again. So we go back up. This time to data set 27, go inside there, inside there, inside there, select that and go open. And then we click submit job. And as before, we wait for a while. And now we've got these phenotypes that are predicted here, uh, various genes that provide resistance to particular antibiotics. So sometimes the same gene will provide resistance to two different antibiotics within the same class, aminoglycosides here. Um, and as we go down, we can see that there's quite a lot here, amoxicillin, got aminoglycosides up there. Uh, we've got sulfonosoxazole erythromycin, azathioprine, um, azithromycin, I mean, um, and then it tells you about the acquired hits and where, what those genes are, uh, and uh, here we have a list of, of, of various genes that are involved in resistance to these different antibiotics. Um, you can look at the gene alignments if you want to. It's, uh, it, we're not really seeing any chromosome mutations and that's because in Acinetobacter everything's done by horizontal gene transfer pretty much. Uh, and also we've not looked for disinfectant genes here but uh, didn't find any anyway. Um, and you can download these results and, and look at them in more detail. You can look at the gene alignments here and so you can actually scrutinise it and say aha so there's a resistance, there's a resistance, there's a, and so forth. Um, okay, so that's that one. And then uh, let's now go to the third example. This time we can put this into Safari or Chrome, it doesn't really matter. Let's put it in here. Um, and we get to NCBI. What it does is it tells us, okay, we're looking at the sequence read archive. We don't want to start your survey. It's giving us taxonomy analysis of one of these 
uh, metagenomes from a faecal sample from an intensive care unit patient. It's telling us in outline terms it's 95% bacteria in there. And what we want to do is to view it in Krona. So we say show Krona view. And then what we get is we get this interactive pie chart here, which um, allows us to see generally what's there. So the most striking thing is that 52% of the reads here are Enterococcus. And that is not at all what you'd expect to see uh, in a normal gut microbiome. This is a very skewed, very simplified gut microbiome. We've still got some things that are part of normal gut microbiomes over here, but they're very much in the minority. Uh, and we've got this huge amount of Enterococcus. Um, and some of it is, is actually earmarked as Enterococcus fecium. A lot of it is just Enterococcus. And um, that, that's because it basically hedges its bets. It can't quite tell what species it's from uh, at, at some times. One of the key thing, cool things you can do here is you can double click and it will take you out and show you what you've got there in terms of Enterococcus. And it's just saying generic Enterococcus, Enterococcus fecium. Um, and then you can basically see all the other kinds of Enterococcus it's saying might be there. When you get these very trace amounts in the, in the background like this, so that's usually missed calls rather than it meaning anything very much. And if we can go backwards and we can zoom back out again. So if you did want to find out what else was going on in, in this uh, genome, uh, in, in this metagenome, you can um, click, for example, on uh, the Pterobacter group here. Uh, and you can see, well, show me what's in Pterobacter uh, group in general. Uh, show me what's in um, Bifidobacterium and you can click on that. And, and, and zoom out uh, and it will show you, oh, it's mostly Brevi, a bit Dentium and most of it's generic. So that's uh, one uh, of these traces. And as I say, you can go back up here by using the back arrow. You can play around with the maximum depth and, and all that kind of stuff. You can, you know, change that dramatically. So uh, you're only looking down uh, from the top down only four levels or five levels or whatever and you can change the chart size and, and, and so forth let's have another look at this trace here it's a different trace we go up there type it in we get that we go let me have a look at it in krona please and we look at the krona plot and this time it's telling us that we've got lots and lots of enterobacteriaceae uh, 69% proteobacteria, this time very little in the way of um, you know, enterococci and so forth, but a huge amount of, of, of this, and 3% of it is E. coli. So here it is actually telling us that 21% are, are of these enterobacteriaceae are E. coli, and 9% are uh, uh, and 9% are Escherichia coli. Again, what this typically means is actually it's probably all E. coli, but it's hedging its bets and not letting us know that. But this is a very skewed uh, microbiome. Again, it's not anything like what you'd expect to see in a, a normal uh, uh, situation. Um, in fact, this generic proteobacteria is a new feature uh, where it's hedging its bets, um, but uh, it's still uh, telling us an awful lot. And then last thing is, in fact, we've got a whole bunch of those reads uh, from that analysis. Um, and if we go there, we can look at all of them, all the biosamples. So if you go here and click on there, um, and you can click on any one of those, and you can click on um, the uh, SRA associate with that and then click on um, the run and do exactly the same as what we just did so you can say so you want to do the analysis you want to look at the krona view and so here's one that's a bit different uh, lots of dark matter stuff that we didn't didn't identify but when we look at the bacterial side of stuff um, if we look at cellular organisms We've got here a much more diverse set 
of organs. We've got some Vectoroides in there. We've got a bit of Enterococcus, still 16%, quite a lot. But we've got these uh, Aerosipalis uh, Trichaceae, some Clostridiales in there. Um, and, and, and so this is a, a, a more diverse thing. We have got some Athenobrevibacter there as well, as we can see, some Archaea. So in this way, you can just easily see what information we can glean quite quickly and easily from uh, microbiomes from the um, intensive care unit gut. And that's it. Thank you. If you want to, if you have any questions, you can email me on mark.palum at quadrum.ac.uk.